the Joe Rogan experience. In the film, I, no. I th when you said, and I've seen you say this on interviews, we have 22 years of research showing that a single high-fat meal impairs endothelial function. Mm. That study was uh, called, it was from 1997. So no, that's the, the, multiple studies, and I can put them up if you want. So that's 22 years. Um, but you, you started effect, study from... Like effect of a single high-fat meal on endothelial function in healthy subjects. So this compared a 900-calorie diet both were on 900 calories. One group had, was eating 50 grams of fat and one group was zero grams of fat. The, we, the high fat meal was an egg McMuffin, a sausage McMuffin. I'm not talking about those. Two hash browns and a non-caffeinated drink all from McDonald's. Yeah, I'm not talking okay, about those. Okay, but that is, that that's one, one study. You just okay. picked one. Well, what, which one are you talking about? Well, I got a bunch. Okay. Well, I got a bunch that actually contradict that. So um, this the same study, the same researcher that did that study found that taking vitamin C and E after the high-fat meal completely eliminated the, the uh, effect that it had on endothelial function, which suggests that a healthy omnivorous diet with plants wouldn't have the same impact. There was a 2019 review, uh, and this is, will be at cresser.co slash game changers, adding nuts, avocados, olives, berries, spice blends, orange juice, red wine, and protein, including milk protein, to a high-fat meal prevents endothelial dysfunction and oxidative stress. No, I, I, We've got uh, several studies that suggest that dairy and egg proteins improve endothelial function. 2015 controlled trial with 52 subjects. Dietary proteins, including milk and egg, improved endothelial function. 2006 study adding dietary protein to a high-fat meal prevented postprandial endothelial dif dysfunction. We have 2009 study followed subjects for 12 weeks. A low-carb diet improved endothelial function, whereas a low-fat diet decreased it. Uh, 2007 study with uh, followed okay, subjects. Okay, we just, just, just you know, I mean, we can go on and on and on. Okay, he, he just ra is rattling on. Is, is, is what, your all of these studies show that animal proteins don't uh, no. increase and uh, no, decrease endothelial so, function. So you have to know more about nutrition. <laughs> And it's really frustrating. Plants, and the please plants respond. In the context. Okay. Respond to it. James. Okay. So first of all, you just you know, compared low carb and high carb. I am not a. I'm not for health. I'm not promoting high carb or low that carb. That wasn't the point. The point is that low carb diets that contain animal products and that milk and egg protein have been shown right, to inc was, improve always, endothelial function, not worsen it. Right. So the claim in the film was that animal protein worsens endothelial. Right. Function. Because that is the scientific consensus, and we keep going back to this. Well, tell Chris. us why. But, tell us well, why I, that is. I mean, or I refute I mean, these other seafood consumption protects against endothelial damage. Seafood is an animal no, protein. Mediterranean diet, which includes animal products, improves pulse wave velocity, blood flow, markers of atherosclerosis. These are studies in the peer-reviewed literature. Yeah, but we're, lots see, what of them. So see, what, what's wrong with this? So the industry-funded studies. What you do if wait, you want? Wait, wait. Who said anything about these being industry-funded? No, but what you do, you see, is compare. Everything is healthy compared to what? Healthy or unhealthy compared to what? So if you have a low-carb diet and you replace a bunch of white sugar and flour, you might not see. It's gonna. The outcome is gonna be a decrease. But, but the claim that was made in the film is that animal product, animal proteins. Uh, worse than endothelial function. Okay. I just listed a whole bunch of studies, especially those suggesting, here's one that says, influence of food patterns on endothelial biomarkers is a system systematic review. The conclusion was that healthy food patterns, abundant in fruits and vegetables, had a, a beneficial impact on endothelial function, westernized patterns, higher intakes of Processed meats, sweets, fried foods, refined grains were positively associated okay. with inflammation. Well, that, which makes my point. And then another, no, it makes my point, which is quality matters. Yeah, so quality if matters. So you give someone sausage McMuffin and egg McMuffins and, and, and you show that. I'm not showing that. that. that my that, studies that are not showing those. Okay, well, let's let him mm. explain his studies. James. Okay, so, so for example, for slide 71, I, I purposely didn't include those studies because I don't think that they're a good thing to compare to. So slide 71 Okay, this, oh, this is nice because there's a graph, right? So you can see, so, oh, everyone's saying like that fat in the blood, that's normal. Well, what do you mean by normal? Yeah, lots of people do that, that's normal. That doesn't mean it's optimal when you see the fat in the blood like that. And by the way, it was a film, we couldn't throw everything in. So when you see fat, that's called postprandial lipemia. That means after a meal, fat in the blood, right? That is associated with up to a 50% decreased endothelial function, which means less nitric oxide is produced, which means that the arteries can't open up as much, less oxygen, less nutrients to the muscles, okay? So that is associated. As you can see in this graph, I don't know. So the solid line is the uh, 
the tri uh, no the solid line is uh, how much your arteries are dilating flow mediated vasodilation right so as the triglycerides this is after the meal okay which was by the way uh, a shake of whipping cream and liquid chocolate and non-fat dry milk okay as the as you eat the meal, you can see that the triglycerides go up. That's the fat in your blood. See, between two and four hours, it kind of peaks. We measured those athletes at two hours. And again, this is not just a film. It's been done for over 20 years in the scientific literature. So as you can see in the graph, right, Joe? Yes. As the dotted line goes up, that's the, the, the appearance of more fat in the blood, right? You get that lactescence, the milkiness of the blood. You can see that very clearly that the flow mediated dilation drops. So it drops by 11%, Okay. If you look, for example, do you, does that make sense? So that when you have those fat in the blood, your ability to, to your arteries to expand goes down. And there's no, like what, there's, that's not an Egg McMuffin. That is a milk and whipping cream, and that's it. So now if you go to slide 73, now I agree this had some, so they compare, now they're here. Yeah, we can skip to the next one. That was 11%. Okay, so here what I've done is, um, the only thing I changed about this graph is uh, I put the, um, green dots for the plant-based meal and the red dots for the animal-based meal. So they were eating Korean barbecue, egg, milk, oil, mayonnaise, rice, and vegetables. And on the other hand, they were having uh, a vegan meal of soup, kimchi, vegetables, orange juice, apple. So it was matched for calories at 800 calories. The green is in red and the, uh, sorry, the, the green is plants and the red is animal-based. So uh, I don't know if you want to go into, but basically, I mean, you have slide 74. But again, please try to remember a lot of people listening. Oh, sorry. Do you want to read the? the no, two? I mean you can if you want. But it's, it, here, changes of serum triglycerides were negatively correlated with changes of FMD That's flow mediated flow mediated dilation. The no studies, doubt. Well, low carb diets often will lower serum triglycerides, and they can no, no, not post prandially, not post -pr not post prandially, not after the meal, for the, which is important to test because that lasts for six to eight hours. And what do you do again? You eat another animal-based meal. So the next part, Joe. The then how, go ahead. Then how is it that triglycerides go down over time if because your body because your body adapts to it? So Joe, can you read uh, the second part? The study suggests that acute HTG that's uh, uh, hypertriglyceremia. It's, it's the fat in the blood, basically. Causes endothelial dysfunction via enhanced oxidant stress, and that. And this may pave the way for the development of arth atherosclerosis. atherosclerosis. Under, yeah. It's a mouthful. Atherosclerosis. Under chronic Under conditions. So what that's saying, like in the short, conditions. acute means short term and chronic is like long term. Basically, Under acute thing, it affects your endothelial function, your ability to exercise and perform. And in the long term, affects chronic conditions like heart disease. And if you go to slide 75, remember that chart that we looked at with the green dots and the red dots? 8.2% decrease in FMD two hours following the animal-based meal, 2.7% increase in FMD two hours following the plant-based meal. Okay, so you got less blood flow. So Chris makes out there's no science, no evidence. It was just this crazy thing that they made up. It was the co-chair of the cardiovascular committee for the NFL that has been researching this for years. I didn't say that, James. I said there was a lot of other evidence contradicting it. So right, but again, you're if we want to bring up... A uh, uh, study, you can, uh, but again, effects of dietary carbohydrate restriction versus low-fat diet on flow-mediated dilation. This is what you're, you've been talking about. No, because FMD, you're not comparing it to the diet that I'm suggesting. After 12 weeks, peak flow-mediated dilation at three hours increased from 5.1% to 6.5% in the carbohydrate-restricted group and decreased from 7.9% to 5.2% in the low-fat diet group. Right. 12-week low-carbohydrate diet improves postprandial vascular function more than a low-fat diet. Right, and, because and the low-fat diet has a bunch of like white flour and stuff in it. That's the thing. But That's so what you're not... often the low-carb diets do too, too that but are I'm being not, compared I'm, I'm or not anti, the I'm diets not... with animal. If we're talking about protein, the claim <clears throat> in the film was that animal protein causes endothelial dysfunction. Somehow we've gotten off talking about fat. And I've just, I'm not arguing I've about just mentioned many studies that show that, that dietary proteins, including milk and egg, improve endothelial function. No, they that don't. fish... Uh, okay, they, they don't based study on the, right here. No, but hey, uh, Joe. So what are these you studies? Can't, you can't Which just say a study, right? Because yeah, I, I, Chris can bring up studies that I can't. Dietary proteins improve endothelial function under fasting conditions, but not in the postprandial state. 
with no effects on markers of low-grade inflammation. But when this you is say in the British proteins. Journal of Nutrition 2015 study. Okay, but dietary proteins doesn't even necessarily mean animal-based proteins, <laughs> right. right? No, it says Di including milk and egg. Including. including. Yeah. Jo jo I'm not like, the bottom line is that he can present any study. I'd have to dig into it, see the funding, what because it, it's always what it's compared to. So you can show a huge benefit for eggs if you compare it to lard, right? You can, there's all this sorts of not, things. Th these were proteins that included soy, soy, milk, and egg, and they all improved endothelial function. Yeah, it's, And then uh, another, another again, if you study take soy showing, or you take showing instead of white sugar. adding dietary protein, milk, or soy <clears throat> to a high-fat meal prevented postprandial endothelial dysfunction. And then there are the two low-carb studies that I mentioned. There's a controlled trial that found that a low-carb, high-fat diet improved pulse wave velocity, which is another marker of endothelial function. There are studies of the Mediterranean diet, which is a healthy diet pattern that includes some animal products, include improved pulse wave velocity. Seafood consumption protects against endothelial damage. Yes, compared, uh, compared to beef, it does. Reviews. And that, that's, can I just say, like, for example, you said you were trying to refute the study about um, the increased risk of cancer, uh, colon cancer, between um, vegetarians and non-vegetarians, right? The three times increased risk for those who had uh, white meat, like fish or chicken, once or twice a week. And then you go to a meta-analysis, which is not comparing, um, you're comparing fish to bacon or Beef, of course, compared to that. These are comparing any, th that, 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 these are controlled trials th that look at dietary proteins, milk, right, again, soy, but Chris, and egg. But Chris, first of all, you have admitted that you don't even know how to read the science. Is that fair? Do you honestly no. feel qualified to, to read even a single paper? Yes. But you don't know how to read a forest I've taken plot? Re research, I, I took a master's level research methodology class. So, but and you don't these are, but you these don't, are, I'm referring to uh, studies that are in the peer-reviewed literature, honestly, James, it's like, it's and you haven't answered the question, like, how, if, if, if protein impairs endothelial function, why are studies showing that milk and egg don't do that? that.